Hi dolls, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial and talking about these two amazing doll makers um, who are both LGBT and they challenge societal norms through their art. So I want to replicate the makeup done by Joshua David McKenney, who is the creator of Pigeon Doll. He does drag-inspired makeup transformations on dolls and his work is just, it's so gorgeous. So I'm going to throw a picture up somewhere so you can see what I'm trying to recreate. It's from his Pink Poodle series. Joshua David McKenney is an LA-based fashion illustrator, sculptor, doll maker. He really does a lot. And I want to compare his work to Greer Langton, who is um, not a contemporary artist like McKenney, but she was actually born in 1958 and she made dolls in the uh, New York art scene in the 1980s. They're actually separated by generations, but they deal with the same themes and they both have this kind of like stylization of femininity. We're gonna take our foundation. This is the Per 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation and you're just gonna dot it onto your face. So for a little bit of context, the fashion doll has actually been around for centuries. Um, both Greer Langton and Joshua McKenney's work features fashion dolls, and so they're actually not oriented at children at all. They're more aimed towards adults and people who are into doll making. The fashion doll dates back to a 14th century European royal wedding. They would make these dolls with the latest fashions from Paris, and then they would send them to different European courts all over the world. After the invention of the printing press and development in paper technology saw a little bit of the downfall of like physical dolls and more kind of like paper dolls and fashion plates and magazines. So we see now the purpose of fashion dolls and how they've kind of been used to historically advertise for things, but what is the purpose of fashion dolls when they meet art? According to McKenney, his goal is to elevate the idea of dolls and McKenney also says that he thinks it's a very undervalued queer art form, which I definitely agree with. Um, making dolls is something that's so personal and so time consuming and really turns into a self-expression of kind of like who you are, who you want to look up to. He actually says, um, pigeon is a language for me. She is the way that I can say things about my aesthetic and ideas about fashion and gracefulness that I wouldn't be able to do just by being myself. So we really see from his quotes that this is more than just something that he does to make money or something that he does to advertise for his brand. It is personal to him. It turned into this really, really beautiful art form. Greer Langton was a trans woman who enjoyed staging photographs with her dolls and she also struggled with eating disorders and um, mental health and addiction and so her dolls kind of reflect that. Greer Langton's dolls are at once glamorous and grotesque. She brings into light elements which previous feminists had kind of like refused to deal with. Monstrosity, mental illness, physical suffering, addiction, fetishism. Through her work, Greer Langton creates a world of beautiful and bizarre freaks. I think that quote is so lovely and it's from just Justin Wadlow, who wrote an essay called A Different Kind of Intimacy. Her dolls are either very gaunt or they have a lot of fat and flesh on them, so it's either one extreme or the other. They are trans often, like Greer. Um, the genitalia that they have do not reflect the way that they're presenting. They have surgeries, they have stitch lines, kind of like Greer herself because she underwent um, surgery to become more feminine. What I'm gonna do next are the brows. This NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel, you can just brush it on like that. He he he. So while we wait for that to dry, we can get into McKenney's works. The first ones that I want to talk about are the Pink Poodle series. I really want to explore the illustration to doll making pipeline. We see McKenney's style develop through his illustrations. He has kind of like these long leggy silhouettes and he's really pushing the anatomy. His silhouettes are so recognizable, so distinctly pigeon. They're also about these kind of like glittering, glamorous poodles that are then transformed by the makeup that they put on their faces. The brows that I see on the doll are are super thin and they're also going up. That's gonna be a fun <laughs> experiment. If you are a perfectionist like me, you can go back in with concealer and just clean up that brow, which I think I will do because they're looking a little bit uneven. <laughs> and I will be right back. I'm gonna go in and powder my brows now just to set them. This is Wet n Wild Photo Focus Powder. Um, it's just like this clear translucent like kind of finishing powder. So both Greer Langton and Joshua McKenney have made celebrity dolls and dolls inspired by drag queens. Langton did her rendition of Candy Darling. It was made from kind of human hair, these hand-painted details. Candy Darling was a trans woman who was 
in a lot of Andy Warhol's films. So she was an American actress. She died tragically young, much like Greer herself. So this was kind of like Greer's homage to Candy Darling. And as you can see, the doll is not shy about her genitalia. She's not ashamed or afraid of her nakedness. And that is kind of revolutionary coming from a land where Barbies meant for children have no genitalia. Kenny released a limited edition series of sculptures of Amanda Lepore, who is another kind of like trans icon, trans activist. I think that it's very telling that these two LGBT doll makers, the celebrity dolls that they choose to create are often other LGBT people and sometimes people who are not very well represented in mainstream. So this is a side showing that you know, transformation can be glamorous. While I was researching this video, I found a lot of similarities between their work that I did not expect to find at all because Greer was very much a fine artist and McKenny does a lot more commercial work. Actually, both of them share this sort of glamour and see beyond what dolls are perceived as and what they wanted them to be to express themselves. Greer Langton actually made a life-size doll of herself called Sissy, performed the same surgery on the doll that she had performed on her as a trans woman. It really was a way of dealing with her trauma and her pain by putting that into art. Whereas McKenny would never have been able to get that level of commercial success without standing on the shoulders of Greer Langton and all of the other queer doll makers who kind of came before him. These two artists, they don't know each other, they're separated by decades. It's just so amazing to me that they can deal with the same subject matter but have two vastly different products and vastly different working processes. I'm just taking the lightest blue shade right there, hitting the inside corners of my eyeball. I'm back and all that I did off camera was just tight line up here and down here and then I added a little bit of white at the corner because if you zoom in really close, the doll has a slightly bigger eyeball. I remember when I was a kid, I went to the Smithsonian Museum and I saw the first original Barbie um, in her little black and white swimsuit and that was kind of it, you know? It was kind of over for me then. I was like, okay, I need to be her. <laughs> That was the most interesting thing in that entire museum full of fossils that were a million years old and rocks that were also a million years old and fish skeletons and whatever. Um, that was the thing that I fixated on. And I think I was really disappointed when I went to other museums and there were not doll exhibitions. So me talking about this is kind of just my way of bringing attention to a topic that I feel like is really undervalued and not talked about enough as an art form. So I took this CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus eyeliner and I drew little lashes right on the top and the bottom of my eye. I also took a little bit of NYX white eyeliner and I just put that right here and right up here to kind of mimic um, the shininess of the doll's face. So you can also just wiggle your lashes around a little to make sure that they're glued. We're gonna go back in with our CoverGirl eyeliner and we are going to fill all these gaps in. This step is why it's really important to take a pencil in the earlier process and line your upper and lower lash lines because if you don't, the gap between the fake eyelashes and your eyelashes will be so real and so ugly. <laughs> Once you have your lashes, you are ready to go. I'm just gonna hit this with some black lipstick to finish it up. This is from Rimmel London and it is a stay matte black liquid lipstick. This is the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray and I just put that all over my face. But that is it. This is the look, guys. So thank you for coming along on this journey while I did my makeup. I hope that this inspires you to look up Joshua McKenney and Rear Langton. I love both of these two artists. My only question is when are museums gonna start putting their art up? I want to see an exhibition with Greer Langton and Joshua David McKinney. I want to see Pigeon Dolls. I want to see Candy Darling. I want to see Divine. I want to see them on pedestals, on the walls. I want to see them displayed. I need them to be in a building together. I think that that would be what we need, especially now with all the anti-trans legislation. You know, you can find community through femininity, through dolls, through makeup. It's so important to have a space for that in the fine art world and in the makeup world. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I will see you in the next one. Bye!